West Brom could suffer a big defeat this weekend. Hello and welcome back to the Premier League preview on my channel. This is the third upload of the week, so if you do enjoy and like what you see around here, be sure to smash that like button and also hit subscribe. So there was a fantastic load of games during the midweek and um, we saw Liverpool come out on top against Spurs, which is very, very important for their season. But we will jump into this week's fixtures and not dilly-dally on the midweek games. So, as you can imagine, there is no games on Friday night or tonight when you'll be seeing this uh, with the midweek games. You can't really expect people to turn it around that quickly. They need some form of break. But the football is kicked off on Saturday with Crystal Palace, who take on the champions Liverpool. And that is then followed by Southampton versus Manchester City, which looks like a really, really competitive game. Everton then take on struggling Arsenal. Everton come into this off the back of a big win against Leicester during the week and Newcastle host Fulham. Saturday then sees another four games in the Premier League with the return of Monday night fixtures as you can tell. Um, so, the so the first game is Brighton who take on Sheffield United, that is then followed by Tottenham Hotspur who take on Leicester City, Manchester United then take on Leeds United and West Bromwich Albion take on Aston Villa. And Monday concludes the action with Burnley hosting Wolves and Chelsea, my favourite team, hosting West Ham. So without further ado, let's jump into the players to watch this week. The first player I have chosen to watch this week is Raheem Sterling. Raheem Sterling has had a very disappointing start to the season by his standards and that's only by his standards. We're so used to seeing Raheem Sterling score lots of goals for Manchester City under Pep Guardiola and he's had a very disappointing start to the season because of that, because of his high standards that he's set for himself. I believe he's got three goals and two assists at the moment but that's not really the output we're expecting to see from a quality player such as Raheem Sterling. I think he needs to kickstart his season this weekend against Southampton who have done fantastically well so far this season. Kevin De Bruyne has also looked hit and miss at times, but the two of them could really dominate this game. And I've chosen Sterling because his goals need to be vital for Manchester City. They're still without Aguero, remember, and he is their main goal source usually when Aguero isn't there. Manchester City sit in ninth after a disappointing draw against West Brom at the weekend, which. Right. So, um, Manchester City suffered a disappointing draw against West Brom and unfortunately they need some goals from somewhere. Raheem Sterling needs to start performing for Manchester City and he needs to start finding that form we're so capable of seeing because I think that's what's stopping Manchester City from really progressing this season. They've only lost twice but they've drawn five games and the lack of goals is clear to see in this Manchester City team. The next player I've chosen to watch this week is... Ollie Watkins. The reason I've chosen this is because I mentioned in the last game West Brom drew with Manchester in West Brom drew with Manchester City and that saw Slavin Bilic get sacked from West Brom. Ollie Watkins and Aston Villa take on West Brom this week. They West Brom will be in their first few days of training with their new manager Sam Allardyce. Big Sam is renowned for keeping teams up and being very defensively compact and I think Ollie Watkins is going to be really important to this Aston Villa side. He needs to be good and successful against West Brom. We know the talents of Jack Grealish, we know he can find a gap, he can create something from nothing but Ollie Watkins is a strong, pacey, tall striker could cause some real, real issues. Big Sam is a fantastic manager and I don't doubt he will have clocked Ollie Watkins and Jack Grealish from a mile off and will be ready to face them. So I think it's very important that they get the very best out of these two players and specifically Ollie Watkins because Ollie Watkins can be a bit hit and miss. Jack Grealish always at his best but that's why I've chosen Ollie Watkins specifically. It is also important to remember that as it is a transitional period between um, Slavin Bilic's style of play and Sam Allardyce's style of play, 
that West Brom could suffer a big defeat this weekend. That's not anything to do with Slaven Bilic as a manager or Sam Allardyce, but as they are trying to convert themselves from one style of play to another, there is often a lot of gaps. And those gaps can be exploited by the two men players I've mentioned so far. They are two fantastic players, Ollie Watkins, Jack Grealish, fantastic. They'll be able to exploit that if the opportunities are there. And they only need the smallest gap in order to be able to exploit that. And that's why I've chosen Ollie Watkins specifically. I think his pacing behind and his hold up play could be really important against what is already being deemed the 4-4-2 of Sam Allardyce. And I think West Brom will be tricky to beat this weekend and Villa need to be at the top, top of their game in order to do so. The final player I have chosen to watch this week is David Luiz. Arsenal face a brilliant Everton side this weekend. The last few games Everton have really, really been good. And without Gabriel this weekend, Arsenal look a little bit short on defensive options. David Luiz will be looking to come back into the fold though on a more permanent basis after the concussion he suffered against Wolves. David Luiz is definitely the man for the big occasion, but whether he's good on the big occasion or bad on the big occasion is a completely different question. David Luiz has a wealth of experience and is a really, really talented footballer on his day, but he can often be very lethargic and lazy on the ball. And Mikel Arteta needs to get the best out of David Luiz this weekend. I assume he is going to replace Gabriel in the centre of the defensive options. And because of that, against an Everton side that has the attacking prowess that they do, I think he could really be exploited. But I think David Luiz brings something that Gabriel doesn't, and that is the leadership and the experience as well. And I think that's why he could be really, really important, because in this Arsenal team, a lot seems to be going wrong at the minute. Mikel Arteta doesn't seem to have a grip on this team, and he seems to be losing a lot of uh, interest from fans really and from everyone around the club they seem to be disinterested in Mikel Arteta's style of play. If he gets a win this weekend it might just put them back on the map and would be a great way to save his job as well because I've been joking about it for the last few weeks but he's definitely towards the end. David Luiz like I said could be that player to put a big performance in at the weekend maybe even grab a goal himself but he could be that player to really save this Arsenal team. Anyway, that concludes this week's Premier League preview. If you do enjoy, be sure to like and as always subscribe. And I will see you on my next video. Thanks.